We've got time for one more, Chris. Um, one, more? one more question. Uh, okay. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, so, Chris, there's a country song that has this adage, you know, I'm old enough to know better, but still too young to care. And I couldn't help but notice, not only in this room, but the way that your demeanor changed when you talked about youth in the Middle East. And I'm curious if you might riff a little bit on uh, the relationship between youth and entrepreneurship. Um, because I think we're seeing a lot of media stories about that and your thoughts about that in terms of starting a business, et cetera. You know, my, my son and a classmate of his just started the first entrepreneurship club in their high school. I mean, you know, you, you see this now everywhere where a new generation is coming together and, and there, it's not a, an abstract thing, right? It's not like I saw the, the Zuckerberg movie, so I need to be that way. It is a general sense that I'm with these tools, I understand these tools. I'm, I'm an immigrant speaker to this stuff. I speak it well, but I am an immigrant speaker. My kids, your kids, this new generation has spoken nothing else. They understand connections between, like nothing else. They understand that they can do things and live a lifestyle that is interesting to them. And so this is something which is completely global. It's obviously at a certain level here, but it is, it, in hindsight, it shouldn't be surprising that I'm seeing it wherever people have access to this kind of thing. I can tell you, in particularly the context of the Middle East, and I saw, I was, I was, ju I was judging a startup competition in Cairo in January of 2011. Do the math. A week after I did the judging, every one of the kids that I met, women and men, were in Tahrir Square. And one of the things that I said then, and I feel it more strongly now, they, they were part and parcel of the same emotion. I mean, when you really pull the string on these young people, I mean, effectively they're saying, look, you know, I, I can see, I got the technology, so I see how everybody else lives. So why should I live any differently? And secondly, I love my parents, but what the hell are they thinking? Why did they live this way? I mean, it's almost like, a, I, I remember actually one, one, one entrepreneur really started beating up this like 60-year-old, 65-year-old professor on this subject at some gathering. I was you know, effectively writing him off. And I had to turn to the young guy and said, look, you won't remember this, but this is one of the guys who said when he was your age, don't trust anybody over 30, right? <laughs> and and there's almost a parallel between this idea that I don't understand why my, I'm respectful of my generation, I'm respectful of my culture, but at the same time, I don't understand why people want me capped. And I don't want to get a job in a government group or a big WASTA base, which is a you know, kind of corruption-based institution, because that's not the life that I want to live. And uh, I don't have to, because I see it's not unlike what I was saying about Health Central. When you see what other people are doing and it works for them, you then become convinced, why not me? And I think that's probably the biggest driver of it all. I'm not sure if that answers what you were asking. I mean, refine it if, you, if I miss something. No. No, I, I think it's a state of mind. I've met, I've met throughout, I see this when I interview uh, younger people when I, when I look to invest in their companies. I, I've met 20-year-olds going on 50, and I've met 50-year-olds going on 18. I, to me, it's a frame of mind more than, I mean, look, I, I got to tell you, I can't run marathons anymore. I mean, there's a physicality that comes with working 21 hours a day that maybe matters in the margins. But it's all about your outlook and your curiosity and, and the way that you look at the world. And, and if you're locked down and you're listening to music from the 80s and you think the world is the 80s and the internet is a way to do the 80s more efficiently, well, I'm not going to invest in you. But that's not, that doesn't come hand in glove with age. And it's amazing. To, I've seen, I just saw an interesting, I think in theory it's a really interesting, exciting idea of, um, of a news group. These guys are in their late 20s, early 30s doing video news and everything else. But when you get them talking, you know, they spend too much time at CNN. They're trying to replicate CNN online. I'm like, you know, you're not, why are you doing that? Well, the book is called Arab, Arab, Arab Incubator. Incubate. It's due out in the spring. Yeah. And this is Chris Schroeder. And thank you so much for being here. Really. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you so much for having me.